that is above every name. You are the name that is above every name. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We honor you, Jesus, this morning. We honor you, God. We honor you, Father. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here for allowing us to come in the presence of the Father. We enter the throne room this morning. You're so worthy. I can wait for eternity. Join the song they're already singing. Holy, holy, holy. Just to bow down before your throne. See your face, I'll cry out because you're holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. What is his name, Judah? Jesus. You're the king of kings.
an awesome praise and worship now let's continue our worship with holy communion i'm gonna be reading from first corinthians 11 23 to 30 and it reads for i have received of the lord that which also I delivered unto you the lord jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he breaked it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me after the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this in, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. I would like to focus on verses 24 and 25 where it says to remember. To remind ourselves what Christ had done for us on the cross. Our mother of the house had given a powerful word. Her message was, watch me come out of this. The only way she and other believers can proclaim that statement is by faith. By faith knowing what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross. No matter what situation we're in, no matter if it's in our healing in our bodies, in our finances, in our families, we know that Jesus Christ had took it already to the cross. It may seem like a big issue, which it probably is, but mom reminded us it's a light affliction because he already bore it for us. So let us take up the bread and the body and let us pray father god we just thank you we thank you father god for the body that was broken for us and the blood that you had cleansed us from all our righteousness we give you all praise all glory and honor for who you are in our lives now let's take up the body and let's take up the blood what can wash away our sins nothing but the blood of jesus and thank you now have an awesome word this morning our theme is starting all over 
again. Amen. Starting all over again. And I'm pretty stoked and I'm excited for this word. Our objective this morning. By the grace of God, we are given a new day to better what we've done yesterday. How many of you know that's by the grace of God? We are given a new day to better what we've done yesterday. Have you evaluated yourself to see what you can do better today? Without reflecting on our days, we can never proceed with greatness. Being all that God intended for us to be. Without reflecting on our days, we can never better, therefore, the way we love, the way we serve, and the way we give. How many of you know that to be true? If we don't reflect on our days, we can never better the way we love, the way we serve, and the way we give. How many of you actually bookend your day? How many of you take journals or have a journal? Right? If we don't journal, we can never reflect back on the things that worked and the things that didn't work. We can never reflect back on the things that we have learned from so we never make those mistakes again. And sometimes we go on in life, going through days, and never reflecting or book ending our day. We just came out of communion, and 1 Corinthians 11, 28 says, let a man examine himself. Do you know that reflection also includes examination? Yes. Amen. Yes. Let a man examine himself. At the end of our days, it's important for you and I to do what they call book in your day. So we can see what we've done, what we didn't do, and what we can do better. The scripture text that we're looking at this morning, 2 Peter 3, 9, it says, The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but he is patient toward you, not willing for any to perish. But for all to come to repentance. How many of you are thankful that God is slow about keeping his promise? I don't know about you, but that's what you call mercy and grace. Because sometimes people are quick to get it. And sometimes people just slow like that. Right? It's like when people tell jokes. And then you see people just sitting there like, huh? And then the apostle goes like this. You'll get it tomorrow. That's the people that they just slow like that. <laughs> Like that, right? I, I get what I mean because I thought about when we used to be up at the academy at, at, at Wyoming Valley Road and we had a slow kids at play sign. It's like slow down because kids are at play. And we had one of our members that say, Pastor, I didn't know you guys had a program for special kids over here. And I said, Huh? She said, yeah, I didn't know that you folks had a program for special kids over here. And I said, what are you talking about? She said, it says slow kids at play. <laughs> but I'm so glad that God is slow at keeping his promise. Because I don't know where you and I be today. I'm always reminded with the scripture that we are living on grace. And every day provides another day to do life better. How many of you are grateful that you have another day to do life better? Thank you, Jesus. Tomorrow will be a better day. Right? Grace allows us to start all over again. Are you making full use of the time granted? So today's theme, again, starting all over again. I want to hit on three areas that I believe that we can be better at. That I can be better at that maybe, like me, you can be better at. Amen, everybody? Amen. Let's look at this morning to better the way we love. And we said it in our, our objective, right? Without reflecting on our days, we can never better the way we love, the way we serve, and the way we give. Let's take the first one of love. If we reflect on our lives, we can hopefully better the way we love. 
Matthew 22, 37 to 39 in the NASB, it says this. And he said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. How many of you can transparent and you say, I don't know that I love my neighbor as myself. <laughs> but I'm cordial with my neighbor that steals my parking. Right? <clears throat> love is a huge word. How many of you agree that love is a huge word? And I don't want to just take scriptures and just read by it and just give you an encouragement for the day. I want to rightly divide the word of truth and break down the word so we can walk out of here knowing the word of God, living the word of God, and making a difference in our lives. How many of you are in agreement? Yeah. So love this morning, it's a huge word. And we all know the scripture of Matthew 22, 37 that tells you and I that we should love the Lord our God, that's the first commandment, with all our heart, soul, and mind. And then we should love our neighbors as ourselves. We know that. But it's such a huge word, word, and the world knows love to be an intense feeling of deep affection, right? An intense feeling of deep affection. To like or to enjoy something very much. It's easy to talk about the word love and not know what to do with it. We use love for how we feel about a certain person, place, or thing. We use love to reflect on caring for something or someone. We use it broadly to refer to something we have a good feeling about, or a good feelings about what we like about them. For instance, I love chocolate cake. Or I love Kona coffee ice cream. So we use this, this word love casually. How many of you have done that before? I love to eat at CPK. My kids like to eat at Chili's. My husband likes to eat at Puka Tita So we get food in three days. But we use the word love so broadly. How many of you realize that now? We speak of the word love very casually because it speaks of our emotive connection to a noun or some sort of person place, or thing. But when we speak about love, church, we are talking about this morning the attributes and characteristics of God. We talk about the perfections of God, the things that make Him who He is. We usually talk about God being sovereign, holy, and righteous. But this morning, I'd like to reflect on another scripture, 1 John 4, specifically in verses 8 and 16, where we find the phrases, God is love. 1 John 4, it says, He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. In verse 16, it says, And we, know, we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. In other words, any discussion about love has to start with God. How many of you agree? Yeah, if you're going to have a discussion about love, that discussion has to start with God. For that is just who God is. It's not just what he does, church. It is a self-definition of God. It's like me saying, I am Hawaiian. I was born and raised in Waianae, and I am a proud Sea Rider graduate. <laughs> West side. Right? So I clarify my identity. It's an unchangeable reality. So when God says he is love in verses 8 and 16, he wants you to look at love as defining at least one part of how he defines himself. If you really want to understand the meaning of the word and where it comes from and how it works, it's best to talk to someone who is defined by that word. How many of you agree? 
You cannot talk about love without first talking about God. And so many times uh, when I was a youth pastor, I'd always tell the youths, if they don't know how to love God, they don't know how to love you because God is love. And then, of course, when we're young, we look at you like, <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. And then when we get heartbroken, we come to the altar and we cry out to the God that really is love. Because we thought that was love. But we fail to realize if we're going to talk about love, we got to start with God. Amen? He is love. And this is the reason why I think many a times we get disappointed with love. Because we're not starting our conversations with love. We're just saying, I love this or I love that. And we place it on, like again, I said, a person, place, or thing. See, I don't love chocolate cake. I like chocolate cake. But we tend to say, oh, but I love chocolate cake. No, no, you like chocolate cake. <laughs> I love Pono Coffee Ice Cream. I don't like when the Bible bookstore does not order Pono Coffee Ice Cream. Because I'm forced to go with my second choice. So I cannot say I love Kona Coffee Ice Cream because that's not an attribute or a characteristic. It's just a thing. So we put love, we put a characteristic or we put an attribute of God on person, on a person, on a place, and on a, on a thing when really it is a being, it is who he is. Amen, church? I was at a community uh, meeting on Friday, and I was telling Apostle about it last night. So they said that, you know, we're gonna have a community meeting and we're only gonna pull a few, what they call gatekeepers, I guess you could say, of the Y and I coats. And so I told Nicole, can you come with me? I, you know, I need somebody to go with me. And uh, Apostle had an appointment. And so Nicole and I went and we represented. And we were discussing you know, some things about the coast and some things that they'd like to see happen along the Waianae coast. And they're asking so-called gatekeepers to tell them a little about what we think should be done with what they think they can do. So we came and we sat in a group of maybe 40 to 50 of us. And the meeting started off by a young gentleman reading us his definition that he researched about in one week. <laughs> so he said, Maka, homeless, drug addicts, broken families, broken homes. And he went on and on, murder, violence, uneducated, low poverty. And he went on and he went on. And everything in me stirred. Because I realized that you're talking about a place that represents me. So I let him talk about why not I am a Paha. And he said, well, let me, that's the, I guess you may say negative things about the area. But let me tell you a few positive things. In this place, they grew banana. My God. You know, so he goes on and he reads a few things, and then he says, so I just wanted to give you folks the definition of the location. And this is what I've researched on for a week. I felt my spirit just not aligned to his spirit. Because I was like, oh, you're talking about me. I let it go on, and they asked, you know, what do you folks think? And I'd say in this room of 40 to 50, there are probably less than 10 of us that was actually from the coast. Everybody else came into the coast. And one person stood up and talked, and a second person, and I was just waiting for something. Somebody say something. <laughs> Somebody say something. And then I nicely stood up as a third person to, I think I was a third person to talk as they handed the mic around. And I said, um, thank you, first of all, for allowing us to have the meeting here. It was at a church on the one night post. I truly appreciate you folks hosting the meeting here. And I said, and, and to 
you know, the person that invited us to a meeting, at the meeting, thank you so much for inviting us to the meeting, giving us a place at the table that we can hear what you're bringing for our people and we can have a place to say what we think our people need. And I said, um, and then to the gentleman that gave the definition <laughs> of this place, and I kind of just kind of glanced over to look. And I said, first of all, I, I don't, I, this is not in any way to be offensive to you. I said, but I do find the definition offensive. I said, I've lived a great part of my life in Makaha before essentially relocating to the heart of Wyoming. And I said, and when I hear what you're explaining the definition to be, that's not who we are. And I said, I am very proud to be from this place. And great things come out of this place. I don't look at this place as a place of violence, of drug abuse, of, of uh, low education. People may say that that's what the place is. People place the stigmas upon this area. People come into the location not wanting to better themselves. So unfortunately, they're living in, a, in such a beautiful environment of the Waianae Coast, but that's not who we are. And so I had to nicely make a correction to say, this is who we are. This, the people is full of love. This is, you're gonna meet some of the best people. My kids till today and my husband tell me every day they wanna move back to the coast and I'm like, no way. I don't wanna wake up at four o'clock to get you on the bus, right? And so I kinda explained why we moved out from the coast and God had a different plan in having the church here. All in, in the story I'm trying to share is, People's gonna have their own opinions of what love is. But if you know who God is, you know the definition of love. It should irritate you when you see people living, uh, if you do this for me, I'll love you kind of life. How many of you know that? It should make you uncomfortable because if love, if God's love is radiating and his characteristics of who he really is, is inside of you, then you know what, it should irritate you when you're not walking in love. Amen, church? It should make you uncomfortable. And let me just tell you, it made me uncomfortable. It made me uncomfortable to hear all these definitions and, and being born and raised and, and accustomed to the people and knowing that good things come out of the place, it made me just a little bit fidgety. How many of you would be a little bit fidgety? See, when you know the love of God, you understand that he loved me even when I couldn't love myself. How many of you are grateful for those things? Love. We gotta understand the definition of love. And I, I told the person, I, I understand that you gather this information, but it's only for a week. Yeah. See, you know when you know God and you wanna know God's love, you don't just come and know him for 10, 30 to 12. You, you get to know who God is. You get to walk alongside God and as you receive Jesus Christ in your life, you learn all this time that the Holy Spirit is present for you and I. How many of you love that, knowing that the Holy Spirit is there? He's just waiting. He's just standing by waiting for you and I to activate his presence in our lives. That's what he's doing. God said you can define him by the world and what the world's perspective is. Or you can truly see him for what he really is. Not getting back, not getting off track, but if I look back and I take you back to what the, the first, what the scripture says, it says here in the scripture, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first commandment, sin. The second is you shall love your neighbor as thyself. Loving the Lord your God with all your heart, loving them, your neighbors yourself. If you do not love God unconditionally, no strings attached, preferred before all things or all others, we can never know how to love anyone else. How many of you agree? Again, if we do not love God unconditionally, what is unconditionally? Not having strings attached. Sometimes if you do this to me, I'm not gonna love you. 
If you don't do this for me, I'm not going to show my love to you. That's strings attached. How many of you know that's how the world operates? Well, you did this to my friend, so I don't, I'm not going to like you. If you don't like them, you'll never be able to love your neighbor as yourself. How many of you agree? You cannot just say, oh, no, no, I just don't like them. No, no, but the things that you don't like, you don't love. It's like liking and loving ice cream. Right? I cannot say I love ice cream. No, no, it, it's a thing. I, I, if God is love, that's just a thing. I like that thing. I cannot replace it and then say, oh, this is a God thing. I always tell, <laughs> I always tell my kids, from the lips to the hips. That cannot be a God thing, right? No, no, I'm just kidding. That cannot be a God thing. But getting back to this, if you do not love God unconditionally, no strings attached, preferred before all things. What is preferred before all things? You desire to wake up in the morning to talk to the person you love. You desire to go to sleep at night after you talk to the person you love. How many of you remember walking to the payphone because you was trying to talk to your boyfriend and there was no cell phone? <laughs> and you didn't want to sit because there was only one house of phone because you had to dial and everybody was standing right there. And then eventually they came up with phones that you could put in your room. But then the battery dies and nobody put it back at the hook. You screwed. So your best bet was to walk down the road and get on a pay phone. Why? Because you wanted to talk to the person that you so-called loved. Now if we love God, we desire to talk to him when we first wake up in the morning. We desire to say, Father, thank you for waking me up this morning. Before we go to sleep at night, we desire to say, Father, Thank you for this day that I had. It may not have gone right, and then we start to book in our day and we start to examine. But Father, I thank you for reminding me of those things. I thank you for getting me out of these things. I thank you, Father. Lord, I break every addiction to this thing you may have. How many of you know that uh, that's what we got to do? If we're trying to start over again and better the way we do life, we got to sit down and really examine our day. Are we really loving God unconditionally? If God is love, that's his attributes and his characteristics, how we respond to people shows the love of God. Now let's move to that. How many of you know that? In this reference in the scripture, loving the Lord is putting him first and siding with him over our thoughts, over our desires, over our personal intellect. Because sometimes we think we know more than God. How many of you know? Sometimes we just think God, he, he, he's probably servicing Nalani right now, so he's probably not even seeing what I mean. So I'll just work on his behalf until he gets his hands off of Nalani's situation and come to me. And all alone, God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. And we just think that God just doesn't know what he's doing with this situation. So I got to kind of take it back and, and put it back in my hands. How many of you know that we do that? Making God first. Siding with God over, over and over um, again in our, uh, our thoughts, our intellects, our desires over the things that commonly make sense to other people that doesn't make sense to God. And it's not right for God in God's ways and how we love. How many of you know that this morning we're breaking down the love of God? Yeah. Amen. Amen. If we're going to love God, the first commandment, with our heart, with our soul, and our mind, we've got to understand that love is not just a word to commonly use and throw around. Love is God. 1 John 4, 6 and, and um, 8 and 16, again, if we go back, really ponder on what those scriptures is talking about. He that love it not, know it not God. Sometimes we have a hard time loving the people that hurt us. Sometimes we have a hard time loving, and, for, and, and this, then this goes into even forgiving. Why? Because God, it, it's another attribute of God. Why do you think we have liberty in 2023? It's because he teaches you and I how to love. 
and in teaching you and I how to love, even the people that we never thought we could ever forgive, we end up forgiving and we turn around and we love them right back. Amen. If you don't love God, this is why you struggle. I'm going to tell you church, because sometimes coming to church, we think we love God. Singing on a praise team, being in a dance ministry, serving people, welcoming, helping kids and teaching kids. We think we are loving God by doing those things. We are only serving. But let me tell you this. If we know how to love God like how he intended, and we understand that the way we respond to people is an attribute and a characteristic of love, I'm going to tell you this. Our service would be better. 16, and we have known and believed the love that God had for us, to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love, he that lives in love, he that abides in love. What is that? To hang out in love. Dwells mean this is the place to live. How many of you have a dwelling place? Right? I have a dwelling place, and I don't like my dwelling place to be messed up when I'm ready to dwell and relax. How many of you are like that? Right? I just sometimes we need just our peace and our quiet in our dwelling place. So when I have the opportunity to have my peace and my quiet, I just want my peace and my quiet in my dwelling place. Like everybody go outside, leave me alone, let me dwell in this place by myself. Because I want to be in my quiet environment that I can relax, that I can think, and I can just have my way without listening to Coco Melon. Right? Sometimes you just want to be in that place. Now, if we look at what, what we're, we're saying here, and the scripture, it says, God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. Now, we're talking about dwelling places. Let me tell you, sometimes it's hard for you and I to be uh, successful in loving because of the places we're dwelling in. Because of the environment that we put ourselves in. If we put ourselves in an environment that they're just hating on the person that you hate, you will never be able to love that person. If you put it and you dwell in yourself in an environment that is so negative that they never would be able to, to see that, they, that greater things are about to come, they'd never be able to see that they can be prosperous in all things. Now we're looking at love. If God dwells in love, then the environment that we're in should be all about love. Amen. How many of you agree? Amen. Now, Sunday night, we had a great gathering. And, and thank you to Arca Safety Coppola and Deacon Ia and Deacon Esquisa for spearheading this gathering that we had at Coppola Rec Park. Right? And, and it was amazing. Because you saw everybody so excited to be there. And the excitement was so much in the air that even if I probably couldn't catch an A good, I went up there to catch an A. <laughs> and even if I knew that this A could possibly break on my head or possibly break and yoke me all over my, my hand, I was so into this, in this game because the, the, it, it was exciting. The atmosphere was, was um, Everybody was in one mind and in one accord. So you, you had a hard time just sitting down and go, oh, I don't want to be here. Because you could feel the environment and you could feel the spirit, the love, the joy that was going on. That even if you sat 10 after 10 and 10 away, we could see the joy of the Lord on your face. That's just like what it is when you're serving and, and you're learning and about God and how his love can dwell in you and you can dwell in his love. If you're sitting in environments that go against the will of God, let me tell you, church, you're always going to be defeated. If you're sitting with people that are always hating on somebody else, you're always going to be defeated. You never know how to love and to forgive because you're sitting amongst people that don't know how to forgive. You got to watch your environment. Amen? I ran across a friend that was at our Easter outreach, and um, I said, how are you doing? And she and I have been friends, we've been friends for, for a long time. And um, she went through some unfortunate situations in her life, and 
And I knew, I've known her and her, uh, her ex-husband for years. And you know, things happen. Um, he wasn't faithful in the marriage and he moved on to be with somebody else. And this, this friend of mine is so, you know, sometimes you have that friend and you, you just, you have to take a second look and you go, I just can't believe this happened to them because the heart that they have is so beautiful. You know, their spirit about them is so beautiful. And, and, and you always you tend to think sometimes, why does, you know, bad things happen to good people like this? And I thought about that for many years, like how could this happen to her? Because, you know, she had such a great job, jobs, you know, she provided for the family. She was the breadwinner in their family. And, and you know, I saw the way she served her, her husband and, you know, kind of watched them as they were growing their kids. And when this totally bad situation happened to them, it, I, we were all like, just no way. So I asked her at the egg hunt, I said, how are you doing? She said, you know what? I am so blessed. And I said, oh, I'm so happy for you. So, so happy for you, she goes. You're not gonna believe what happened. And I said, what? She said, so I was at a game. And she said, but before I went with the, to the game, she said, you know, God told me that that spirit that broke up my family was a generational curse because of things that happened in, in her, for, for her ex-husband's family and their family. She go, and God just ministered to my heart and told me, you know, you can stop that generational curse from falling upon your children. And I said, amen, I believe that 100%. She goes, so you're not gonna believe what I did. So I said, okay, she goes, so we were at a game and she walked in, right? The new wife walks in and she walked, she went to walk right past me. She goes, and I stood up and I, I grabbed her hand. And then I, she goes, she looked at me and first she went to try and move her hand. She goes, but I looked at her and I put my arm on her and I said, I love you. I forgive you, and I ask you to forgive me for my reactions towards you. I kind of stood back and thought to myself, why? Because in the flesh, you would ask yourself, common, wrong way of thinking, why would you have done that? You didn't need to do that. You weren't the one at fault. You see how in the world, we come back and we look at the world's way of thinking. We look at our intellect and how we think it should be done. I mean, I was a little for a second dumbfounded because I knew everything that she went through. I mean, I would pray with this, this lady and when the, when the deception was happening, you know, she was willing to forgive and willing to try new and willing, just ever willing. And when she told me that, I kind of just stared at her and I said, I don't believe it. And she goes, I've never been so free Hallelujah. in my life. Hallelujah. She goes, Jadine, she goes, you don't even know. She goes, we can sit at games. She goes, okay, they're not my best of friends. She goes, but I have no feeling against them. I don't hate them. She goes, I love her because she's a, she's a role model now that my children is going to look up to. And if I want my children to sit amongst people that is influencing them and sit and to be influenced the right way. She goes, I gotta build a relationship with her. I gotta build a relationship because I gotta understand that if I want generational curses to be broken upon my sons and upon my daughters, it's gonna take me to understand the love of God. He forgave me. And the, the least I can do is forgive her. The least I can do is forgive her. She goes, I, I don't want it that to do, they don't, they never mix that up. She goes, I don't want anything bad. No, nothing bad. She goes, but I want, I want to live my best life for God. She said, I want to live my best life for God. I want God to bless me. I want my children to be blessed. I want them to have blessed marriages. She goes, and I was praying, and the Spirit of God told me, if you want to break this upon them, it's going to start with you as their mom. You got to forgive. You got to forgive. Freely I forgave you. Now you got to forgive her. You gotta forgive him. She goes, and I forgave. I looked at her and I said, when I grow up, I hope I can be like you. And she laughed, she goes, shut you. She goes, no, you, you don't know the prayers. I appreciate the prayers. And I just looked at her and I said, no, for real. I'm so blessed that God can do that for you. Amen. I said, you don't know what a testimony you are, you are to me. Because if somebody, I mean, 
The things that was done to this woman that she didn't even do. See, sometimes the enemy will cause lies to come against you and you weren't even there. He'll make words, people will make up words that you said and you never ever told them hi. And I'm gonna say this because when Mark and I had to separate and prepare, the first thing God told us is be aware for the assignments, be prayed up. Be, have on your armor of God. Know that I'm about to use you in this time. You gotta have your armor on. Boom, very next morning, we got a call, a challenge. I mean, the words that were said that we said, the people, we, people that we supposedly talked to, we never talked to. I was blown away. But I'm not blown away that the enemy will cause assignments to trip you and I up. I'm not blown away by that. I expected the assignments to come. And we looked at each other. I put it on speaker. My husband was there. I said, honey, you got to listen to this. Apparently, we was talking to these people. Apparently, we said these words. And he goes, oh, my goodness. You're absolutely wrong. I sat by my wife the whole time. We were sitting in this one area. I was the one that went over to tell the people I wasn't even her. And the people you're talking about wasn't even there. We, we, we were there by ourselves, actually. The enemy will conjure up assignments to take you out, church. But God loves you so much that he reminds you, greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. No weapon formed against you will prosper. I sat there that day, I looked at my husband, I said, here it comes, honey. Ready or not, man, here it comes. And we looked at each other, we, I didn't know whether to cry, to laugh, or to run. I said, I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. Now, I'm not going to hate on the people that are doing this. I can only love them from afar and say, Father, grace and mercy upon them. But how I respond to this situation, help me. Because everybody knows when, when you've been accused of something, you absolutely know. The first thing the world is going to take, they just wait till I see them. Give me their number now. Let's meet up with them now. And everything in me wanted to say, oh, no. And I had to drive, and I, 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 I wasn't, I, I was born, like how in speeches, I was speechless. Because I was like, who, who I was talking to? Oh my gosh, I said hi. But you wasn't talking, they wasn't even there. And I had to ask God to help me to love them. Even when the next assignment came and my husband and I felt like we were being crucified on the cross, I thank God that he reminded me, I went to the cross and you cannot do what only me Amen. can do. So forgive them because I forgave you. Amen. All the way up until this morning, the assignments kept coming and kept coming and kept coming. We looked at each other and we sat down and we said, Father, this is a day that you have made. We will rejoice in it, and we will be glad. And I told my husband, you're going to think that this word was, was put together because in, in regards to the situations we went to, honey, I'm going to tell you something. I had this word from last week, and the Spirit of God said, today is the day. So just as much as I'm encouraging you, sometimes we've got to start all over again. It's an encouragement to us, ourselves, this morning. Starting all over again, it's going to be hard, but we can make it. Why? Because you're going to be tempted to look at the individual and walk the other way. Are you going to do what God does and walk up to him and say, you know what? I love you. I forgive you. And if, even if you know you never, and if I offended you, I ask you to forgive me. How many of you know that that's a part you got to love your neighbor? as yourself. Amen? Amen? You gotta see them as God sees you. How many of you are blessed? Amen. I have a lot of notes but we're running out of time. Somebody say amen. amen. <clears throat> when you love the Lord, it doesn't matter who doesn't like you. And who talks about you or ill treats you. You can continue to serve because all that matters is God loves you and you love him. You can wake up with the joy of the Lord. You look around, 
and you can pray for someone to love on just a little bit extra today. How many of you know that's what God needs you and I to do? If we really say we love God, who can we wake up to every day and say, who can I just love on a little bit extra today? Because how many of you know this world is hurting, man? This world is hurting. And we don't know the situations that everybody is going through. We don't know. I thank, I thank God for my husband because he's totally opposite from me. <laughs> right? I like to say, I'm the good girl that married the bad boy. Amen. <laughs> but I thank God that he teaches me things that i got to be aware of because I was born in the house of God. And when you're born and raised in the house of God, you just tend to just think everybody is love. <laughs> and everybody loves you. And you love everybody, and you can forgive everybody. You know, you become a little bit more trusting of your environment around you. And he reminds me, he goes, Jay, not everybody is like you. And I go like this, but why? I want to love them, he goes, Jay, don't be naive. Not everybody is like you. You gotta stop being naive. Then we'll come across situations that he told me, can I trust them? Don't just easily trust them, Jay. Spirit of discernment, don't just easily trust them. So he reminds me, right? But it doesn't mean I cannot love them. I told him many a times, he told me, thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you. And I looked at him and I just said, okay, okay. And I looked at him and I said, I don't know any other way. I don't know any other way. Because in my house growing up, before I went to sleep every night, it was mom and dad, I love you. It was don't let the sun go down upon your wrath if you're angry with each other. So we're gonna make it right tonight. We're gonna take it to the throne of God because we're gonna wake up victorious. I don't know any other way. And I learned, be careful what you say against others because it's gonna be measured right back into you. I told him, I know we went to situations this week that was tough. You don't have to ask me. You don't have to keep telling me thank you. I said, honey, that's what the love of God is. I don't know any other way. When you come to truly know who God is and the love of God, that's the only, that's the only, that's in your mind, that's the way you display God. And not just this thing, it becomes so much a part of you. And like I said, when I spoke up at the meeting and I said, I am proud to be from Wai'anae. You stand up against assignments and you said, you know what? It doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter what people think. This is who I am in Christ. How many of you agree? Yeah. Church, we got to come to a point in our life that we cannot pick and choose when we want to love. That we cannot pick and choose when we want to forgive. We got to come to a place that we got to stand up and say, I'm going to side with God in all things. We're going to make this right right now because this is not of God. We cannot go on like this. We cannot go on in Pelikia. We got to bring these things to light so we can love wholeheartedly. I tell my husband, I don't like to get up on a stage if there's something that's going on. You got to make it right now because I don't want to fake the funk. Too many times people listening to things and you're listening to people that's teaching you about a subject that they have never overcome in their life so you can never be victorious. Let me tell you this church, that's the reason why you gotta be careful what you're listening to. That's the reason why if it cannot be proven in the word of God, if I was you, I'd run. I don't like to come up here at PDK because I owe it to God and I owe it to the people to the, be the best GD that he has created me to be for his will and for his glory. Amen. And I encourage you that, church. Be the best you that God has called you to be. That when you tell people you love them, that they feel your love. There's too many people that's hurting in the world because they thought that was love. Because somebody so, kind of showed them a little bit of what their definition of love. If, if it ain't God, it's not love. Every conversation we should start having and every about love should always start with God. Amen. You love that person? Do you love God? God, have you accepted God into your life? Because God is love. You cannot tell me you love them and you don't even love God. You don't even know how to love. 
God's love is unconditional. He may fail you tomorrow. What you gonna do about it? Because God forgives. They may say words that's gonna hurt you. What you gonna do about it? Because my God can take those hurts to the cross for you. This is the attributes of God. If we're gonna love God in our heart, in our soul, in our mind, we gotta be walking every day in the love of Christ. How many of you say amen? Amen. Better the way we love. The next is, let's better the way that we serve. Psalm says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. When you've received the love of Christ, you better the way you serve. And you understand, Father, I thank you for loving me. Thank you for giving me another day. Thank you, Father. I wake up and bless the Lord. Thank you, God. Let me make a joyful noise. Amen? This is why I say when we come to church, if you came expecting, uh, if you came to be healed, if you came to be delivered, you've got to come with a heart of expectancy. You cannot let the praise team come up here to try and get you pep up. You gotta already come with the joy of the Lord. Yeah. You gotta come walking in, in this church saying, come on, praise team. I'm here to make a joyful noise. Yeah. Come on, praise team. Come on, instrument players. You gotta walk in that church like this. How many of you agree? Amen. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. That's what God has said. He wants you and I to better the way we serve. How do we serve? Serve him with gladness. If you're mad, go in the bathroom, punch yourself in the face, and come on here a new person if you got it. Sometimes we just got to do that. Because let me tell you, the people that's walking in the stores, they're coming to be revived. They're coming to be renewed. They come in to restore. They don't need somebody that doesn't know how to do CPR. They need somebody that know how to do CPR, been practicing CPR. They know how to shout out and say, hey, you, call, call the ambulance, 911. They want the person that's been rehearsing and rehearsing and rehearsing so when they walk in, you're serving them how God wants you to serve them. How do you rehearse every little obstacle, every little word, every little... Um, Thing that comes against you, the way you respond and you react, you're rehearsing so when that day comes that God uses you for that soul that's crying out and walking in, you ready. Amen. Every year you got your CPR card ready. Mm. Every year you went out to make sure you were certified in CPR and first aid. Even if I didn't didn't work on somebody this year, next year I might have somebody to work on. Even if I didn't work on somebody next year, next year I might have somebody. I, I'm ready, God. You're not waiting till it comes Easter outreach to say, now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna look what Romans says. You're rehearsing the word of God. You're ready to serve him. You're starting all over again and you're asking God, Lord, use me for your will and your glory. Thank you. Help me to love the people, to see their needs, to be prepared for whatever it is they're going through. How many of you know the people is relying on you and I to be prepared? Amen. Amen? We gotta get it together, church. We can't be sitting in church pretending and faking the funk like we have it all together. Right. And that's the reason why many people don't want to go to church. Because this is a this is what they say about the people in church. They don't even have it together, but they fake like they have it all together. Honey, not in this church. If you don't have it together, be honest to say, I need help. I need help and I need prayers. And you know what? We're coming right there because any two or three in agreement that comes together, there he is in the mix. We pray him to sing out. Hallelujah. I'm not afraid to say we struggle in our family sometimes. Right. Like probably you struggle in yours. Amen. And even worse, we have what they call a special blended family. It wasn't by choice that my children lost their dad at seven, three, two, and one years old. But God saw fit to bring another dad into our lives to raise them up. And we're gonna do the best because God found fit that mom can love and be loved again. And the ministry can go on. Amen. But if I keep living as a victim to my situation, I can never see that God forgave me, he forgave them, and now I can serve the people that was in that same situation that I came out of. 
Because let me tell you, what COVID brought is thousands of kids that is parentless, thousands of people that is widowless. What you gonna do about it, GD? Sit back and, 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 and be a victim to your situation? Or you gonna turn around and say, I don't know what you mean, Woo! but I know the God that was there for me. And that's the God that I can share with you. Come on, church. We all have been through situations in our lives, but how are you going to serve better? Father, oh, thank you. Know ye not that the Lord, he is God, it is he that had made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endure to all generations. To all generations. The power of God will not stop in my generation. It will go on to my children, to my children's children, and they will know that God is good all the time. Because of the way I can love him, because of the way I can serve him, because of the way now I can serve others. Even in the midst of my hurt, even in the midst of my situation. It is what it is, but my God told me this. I will turn it around for good to all those that love me and it's called a call. Come on, church. Are you called? Are you called this morning? That's better the way we serve. When you love the Lord, it doesn't matter who doesn't like you. And who talks about you, once again, who ill treats you, it don't, it don't matter. You can serve because he has been good to you. You can love because he chose to love you even when you couldn't love yourself. Even when you couldn't love yourself. Lastly, let's better the way we give. Second Corinthians 9, 6 to 8 says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according has his purpose as he purposes in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of, uh, or of necessity. Meaning, don't give and you really don't like give. If that's the way you feel, it is better for you not to give. Amen? Amen. It is better for you not to give. So let him give not grudgingly or out of necessity. For God Love it. There's a love again. A cheerful giver. Meaning his attribute, attributes of love in this scripture is he is happy, yes. willfully ready to give. Thank you, Lord. Willing to do whatever it takes. When we talk about love this morning, I take you back to the triune. I don't know where my notes it is, but I have it in my head. I take you back to the triune. God created Jesus, that Jesus may love him and bring him glory. Guess what God created after Jesus? You and I. So we could love Jesus and bring the Father, and, and, and love Jesus, bring him praises, and when Jesus sees that we're giving him praises, he comes back to the Father and gives him glory. Now, Pastor J.D., what about the Holy Spirit? How do you think we come and bring him praises? Mm. When the Holy Spirit lives in you and I, Amen. he guides and he directs us. And when we can look at somebody that we had ought against and they did us wrong and we say like this, I forgive you. I love you. You know what happens? The praises go to the Son and the glory goes back to the Father. Amen. Makes sense, yeah? It's like having a love fest. It goes around in circles. And around in circles. 
and around in circles. We were created to love on the sun. And in loving on the sun, you need to tell me, he gives the Father glory? Absolutely. How do we love on the sun when we cannot love the Holy Spirit guides us? When we cannot forgive, when we, when we so in shambles in our relationships, in our life situation, he comforts us. And we say, thank you, Jesus. Say the name of Jesus. I speak Jesus over my community. I speak Jesus over every addiction. I speak Jesus for my family. I speak Jesus in the streets. When we speak Jesus and we give him praise, it goes back to the Father. And the Father is glorified. Church, I don't know where you are today, but I do want to say whatever you have gone through, Whatever you have gone through this week, whatever you may be going through, this word is an encouragement that you can start all over again. Amen. 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 You can look at today's word and press reset. I screwed it, God, 10 years of my life. I screwed it, Father, last week. I screwed it last night. But I can press reset today. How many of you thankful that you can re re press reset? Amen. Amen. And just because I wanted to throw this in, because he's my uncle and has been here before he uncalled me. <laughs> he blessed with the song, starting all over again. Check out the words. Jesus. 
Maybe you tried to get a home. Maybe you tried to get a car. Maybe you tried to get things that just didn't work out. I'm not telling you you got denied yesterday, go try again today. What I'm saying is take God by his promises. Fix those areas and trust God that you will make the crooked paths in your life straight. And then go back to the Father. Start all over again. That's his love to you and I. How many of you think? They think that I'm all by myself in this fight But they do not know the infinite size Of the God who is by my side Hey, on the fire, but my Goliath Standing in the shadow of the Almighty I ain't lying, just testifying Man, I'm talking about a big God, big God When trouble comes around I face don't make me afraid when I know that I'm standing right next to him when I'm talking about a big guy big guy when trouble comes around the way only remedy for big eyes is a big guy ain't nobody gonna shake my faith no I'm not afraid throw my hands up in praise for the times that he pulled me through I'm counting on a big guy that they can't stop joining us here at Ark of Safety Christian Fellowship. Remember, if you're giving your tithes and offering, you can visit us at aoshawaii.com or text the word GIVE to 1-808-518-3793. God bless.